Do you want to improve morale in your workplace? In this video, Master Certified Coach Janet M. Harvey has three great tips leaders can use to improve office morale. Okay, so you measured and you sponsored a project and you thought it was fixed, so you measured again and guess what? It wasn't. That's right. I'm Janet Harvey, CEO in Invite Change, and you cannot improve employee morale by survey. It just doesn't work. Of course you need to measure, but let's talk about the three things that are more important than the actual collection of the data. The first idea is to consider what's causing morale to sag in the first place. Because, of course, it was a moment in time when you decided to do that survey. You either heard some grapevine news or there was something that happened externally and you're sure it's having a negative impact. But the truth is you're not really sure. And if you do a survey that's standard in its questions, you're going to miss what's really going on. And what's important here is that you take some time to deeply listen to the organization learning how to convene what we call learning circles. More on that later. The first step here really, learn to listen deeply before you go and do a survey. Here's the second piece of this. When you're listening, you're going to be very tempted to say, yes, but we have all kinds of things we do in the workplace. You know, cafeterias and childcare and benefit programs and college reimbursement, all kinds of things that we put in place in order to improve the employee's experience. And yet, we're a little bit shooting in the dark or maybe chasing the competitor. Instead of understanding what's unique about our culture, what's unique about our workforce, what is it that has them be excited to be here and to enjoy the work and to enjoy the company they keep with each other? Unless you ask that question, without listening with the filter that says, yes, I hear that's what you want, but we're doing this, this, and that, you're essentially signaling you don't care. You're not really interested in changing something that would improve the morale in the workplace. And so step three is to transform your yes buts into yes and thinking. Now there's a little catch here because the yes has something after it before you say and, and this is your opportunity to affirm what you're hearing. There's nothing more respectful for any of us. Personalize this for yourself. When somebody listens to us and then they say back what they understood the meaning to be of what was expressed. When that happens, we feel heard and seen and respected and trusted and valued. There's a certain dignity in that interaction. Once that's taken place, another period on the sentence, if you will, then you can say, and, and now here's the go for the gold, what could we do differently in our benefits programs that would address what you're speaking about? In other words, stay engaged in the curiosity on their behalf rather than justifying a position or trying to create something that you think is the alternative because your answer may not actually match up. It's so much better to know exactly what is it that we could match up to that would create better morale in the workplace. And if you wanna take this to yet another level, I have another YouTube for you about how to go from conflict, which is common in employee morale issues, and move it to breakthrough thinking amongst all of the team members. You'll find that on our YouTube channel. Have fun exploring.